Hi there, welcome to episode 2. Let's look at the three most important nodes used in the game. These scenes represent the core game logic like startup, spawning the player, pausing the game, and showing the player their time score after winning the game. The first is the game scene. Even though the scene itself is not complex, it is one of the more important because it's responsible for managing all other parts of the game while the game is running. It is the scaffolding that all of the game logic runs on. We'll take a look at the game scene's code in a moment, but let's look at the tree structure of the scene first. The game scene consists of two children nodes, the player instance and the level container node. The player instance is what the player will control in the game, and we'll dig into that scene in much more detail in episode 4. For now, I'll make three callouts for this player node. First is this icon here. It tells us that this node is an instance of a more complex scene. We can click it to view the full scene in more detail. Second, the node type of the player scene is character body 2D in Godot 4. Previously in Godot 3.5, this was known as the kinematic body 2D. And third, this player node will be moved to a different location in the node tree when the game starts up. It will be moved to the level container node. The second child node is that level container. This is where the game data will exist during runtime. It is broken down into several canvas layers that will draw on during the game. For example, we have a layer for the pause screen, one for the HUD, and one to store the level's tiles. We'll also keep the parallax background in the level container. In the next episode, we'll provide more details on the canvas drawing layers, and in episode 5, we'll break down the level scene even further. Okay, so we want to see some code for the game scene. First, we need to know about the globals used in the project. It can be opened using the file system panel in the editor. Globals allow us to access critical data from anywhere in the game without having to know the exact location of that data in the node tree. We'll use the following globals set up in the globals GD script. The game object is our link to the main game scene. We'll use this anytime we want to quickly reference the main game scene and data. The link to the player's camera will allow us to quickly change the viewport during the game. We'll have links to the various drawing layers so that we can draw to those canvases from anywhere. And we'll have a true false flag to represent if the game is paused or not. And we'll assign all of these globals to the correct data and locations in the tree when the game starts up. With the globals out of the way, we can now look at how the game starts up and how we score the game. Our game scene is using the script game.gd. It can be opened by using the script editor at the top, or by clicking on the script icon next to the game scene in the scene tree at the left. At the top of the script, we have three variables. The first two store the time the game has been running. We'll keep track of when the player pauses the game, and we won't count that against the player, so we'll have two time variables. The third variable holds the level scene that we want to load. We'll use Godot's preload function here so that we can create the scene later using the instantiate function. We can easily swap out different levels during development by changing this preload. In addition to the variables, there are a few functions to see. In our ready function, we assign all the globals to their respective nodes in the node tree. We'll also create the new level instance using the preload level from before and move that new level instance and the player instance into the correct layers in the game tree. Finally, with the nodes in place, we can initialize the level's trigger points and start the level. In our process function that runs for every frame tick of the game, we'll keep track of the total time the game has been running. That way we can show their time total when they win. In this demo, we also print that time out to the debug canvas. This function also handles the player's pause feature of the game. It allows the player to pause and unpause the game, and it has several effects, the main one being that the time counter doesn't increase when the game is paused, and will only resume when the game is unpaused. Pausing in Godot is an interesting design. Because the game is a tree structure, we can decide which parts of the tree branches are affected by pausing the game engine. We do not want to pause the entire engine. 
by using a combination of the process modes Always, Pausable, Inherit, and Disabled, we can pause parts of the game, like the player and the level, but leave other parts, like menus or the actual unpause button, unpaused. Notice how the top level game scene process mode is set to Always, but the player scene mode is set to Pausable. When the game is paused, the code and logic on the game scene will continue to run and it will not pause, but the player scene will be completely paused and any code in it will not execute. Similarly, the drawing layers also have their process modes set to allow the level, including things like enemies and bullets, to be paused, but leaving the pause screen and the HUD layers active. If we did not set up the process modes this way, we'd find that once we pause the game engine, the player would not be able to unpause the game because the engine would have stopped accepting input. Finally, in our handle pause function, we check to see if the player just pressed the pause button. If they did, and depending on if the game is already paused, we'll set the global's game pause flag. We'll hide or show the pause screen. And most importantly, we'll pause or unpause the game engine using the get tree paused property. And that covers the primary scenes in the main game loop with pausing capability. We're going to jump into the player and level scenes in episodes 4 and 5, but in the next episode we'll go over the different canvas layers in more detail. Those layers will help us draw the game's sprites, tile set, HUD, and text messages in the game. Thanks for watching.